Uh, I was only 22 when I first came to Southwestern. Uh, just graduated from college, and uh, I really wanted to be used by God. And the first night in Forward Hall, Men's Dormitory, I went to the prayer room, and uh, I began to pray. Lord, uh, make me more closer to you as I study in the Southwestern. And uh, I thank to God and all the great professors who have influenced and made a great contribution in my life that has not only given education, but shaped me and uh, helped me to be more closer to God. And my life and my ministry, are uh, they made a great part in my life. Today's text for the message is from the passage in Sermon on the Mount. Uh, Jesus taught us not to worry about uh, what we will eat or what we will not drink, what we will drink. But that is what the non-believers does. But instead, how we should live, Jesus said, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all those things will be given to you. Matthew chapter 6, 33. People worry about money and happiness. And about their careers. And about their retirement. How are you going to live after the retirement? But it is also said that Christians and even the pastors worry about the same thing. But Jesus says, don't worry about those things. God will provide it to us. It is true that I went to seminary with uh, very little money, and God has provided. I planted church with uh, no promise of uh, any salary, but God has faithfully provided. It is God who provides for his children. Instead, we ought to seek first his kingdom. When Jesus says his kingdom or kingdom of God, he's not talking about one church. When I was pastoring for 20 years, I preached on the, this uh, passage several times. Seek first his kingdom. And, uh, but most of the time, I emphasize, my emphasis on, my, on the church, my church. Okay, you got to be faithful to church. You got to come to church. You got to give to the church. You got to serve in the church. I really then emphasize the true kingdom of God. I was not, I'm not saying that the building church or growing church is not seeking the kingdom of God. But what I'm emphasizing is God's vision for the kingdom of God is greater than one local church. Some people are career builders. They're trying to gain fame, make name for themselves. Their main object is personal success and happiness for himself and his family. Some pastors are church builders. How can I make my church grow? How can I make my church be influential church in America and in the world? Their goal is mostly focused on building their own church. We are not called to be career builders or church builders, but we are called to be kingdom builders. Jesus was all in on building the kingdom of God. The main teachings of Jesus was focused on kingdom of God. You know the, what Jesus' first message was? Repent, the kingdom of God is in the air. He began to preach about the kingdom of God. Many of Jesus' parables starts like this. Kingdom of heaven is like this. He taught us about kingdom of God and how we can be kingdom builders. What does it mean then to seek his kingdom first? 
uh, we can look at the Lord's Prayer. Uh, in the Lord's Prayer, Jesus gave to the disciples and to us to pray. There are several uh, prayer lists, prayer items that you can find. Do you know what is the main uh, essential focus of the prayer? It's not giving a daily, a daily bread or leading us not to temptation. I know obviously those are important too. The main focus of the Lord's prayer that Jesus taught us is, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus taught us to pray for the kingdom of God to come so that the God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus commanded us to pray for kingdom to be expanded, expand, expanded in this earth as in heaven. In other words, when Jesus says to seek his kingdom first, he means praying and working for the kingdom of God to be expanded in this earth. When Jesus says his kingdom, he's not talking about the land, obviously, but he's talking about where God's word is done, where God rules and controls. So when you make Jesus rule your life, and you make Jesus king of your life. Kingdom of God is in your life. But if you are controlling, you are the king, that's not Jesus' kingdom, God's kingdom. That's your kingdom. Then how can I be kingdom builders? How can I expand the kingdom of God? I want to share two things to be a kingdom builder. Number one, share the gospel. Share the gospel. I know you have heard this so many times. And, but the kingdom of God begins in the very smallest place possible, which is heart of a person. When a person receives Jesus, becomes a child of God, and begins to be ruled by God, the kingdom of God is present in his life. John 1, 12 says, As many as received him, as many as believed in his name, to them he gave the right to become children of God. When I was preaching one of the Korean church in South America, and after the preaching was over, uh, one a young girl, six year, sixth grade girl, came with his parents to receive prayer. Uh, because her health condition wasn't good, and she asked me to pray for her. Before praying for her health condition, I asked her question, have you received Jesus Christ in your heart? She says, she doesn't know. I don't know. And her parents says, she's been going to church all her life. She's been faithful, and she reads the Bible every day. Obviously, I uh, begin to ask again, have you exactly pray to receive Jesus. Have you said, uh, said such prayer? She says, no. I asked several more questions about the, uh, uh, the gospel, and I led her into prayer to receive Jesus. Uh, while leading a prayer, uh, when it was point, when I it received Jesus as my Lord and Savior, I give my rest of my life to you. Please come into my heart and be my master, my king. He, she began to sneeze and have a tears on her eye. Little girl. So after the prayer, I asked her, why are you, you have a tears in your eyes? She says, because I'm so happy. What? So happy? Well, it was the Spirit of God entering her heart. Kingdom of God has just entered her heart. When gospel enters someone's heart and they accept Jesus, kingdom comes into their life. Jesus becomes their life, master of their life. More people and more people receive Jesus. Kingdom expands. 
It's not through the good works. You can do so much good works, kingdom never expands. Only way the kingdom can expand is that someone else accepts Jesus Christ. That is only when you share the gospel. You may be responsible for many important things in your church and community, but let me tell you, most important ministry you, uh, you can do is to share the gospel. Kingdom builders share gospel to expand the kingdom of God. On my first semester at Southwestern, I didn't have much choice, but uh, there were only a few courses left over, so I took two evangelism classes. <laughs> in one semester, and Dr. McDowell and Dr. Lloyd Fish, and then they were great. <laughs> and most of my classes were really uh, wonderful and spiritual. But when I took the Dr. Lloyd Fish's uh, personal evangelism class, I came out every class literally in the tears. Why? Because Dr. Fish's testimony and then all the classmates' testimony of how they were sharing gospel and someone come to the Lord and their life has been changed. It made a great impact in my life. You can never change someone else's destiny until you share gospel. So be kingdom builders by sharing gospel. Number two. Embrace your neighbors with love. Embrace your neighbors with love. Love of God. God's ministry began by lovingly embracing the world. God so loved the world. The climax of Jesus' ministry was his love for us, for the sinners, even unto death on the cross. One of the most effective ways to share gospel is to embrace someone with the love. One of the most effective ways to have unbelievers who are not open to hear gospel to come to faith in Jesus is to embrace them with the love. So be kingdom builders as you embrace the people God has entrusted to you. We often prioritize the Great Commission Yet we often neglect the full, uh, full, we neglect to fully live out the great commandment. The love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. It takes great commandment to achieve great commission. Without genuine love for God, we are powerless and ineffective for the gospel. Without love for our neighbors, many people will not have ears to hear what we are saying. Parable of Good, Good Samaritan in Luke chapter 10 is the Lord's teaching on loving our neighbors. Jesus taught us who is our neighbor, and he, sh he taught us how we should love our neighbors. Who is our neighbor? Good Samaritan who was traveling had no relationship with the man who got robbed. He's not his friend. He's not someone who lives next door. He was not probably Jews, not even Samaritan. But this Samaritan became a neighbor to the man who was robbed. He cared for him and he helped him. Our neighbor is not just someone who lives next door, but anyone who meets, anyone who needs our love and care. People, were in the world, people in the world needs our love. They need the love of Jesus Christ. Uh, we want to, God wants us to love our neighbors. Remember, the opposite of love is not hate. 
it is indifference. People who fail to love their neighbor live in indifference. They walk past by their neighbors without seeing them. They just ignore and they just pass by. Look, chapter 10, priests and rabbis were, they saw him, they obeyed, uh, avoided him, and they passed by him. Oftentimes we are like this. We pass by so many people that God has entrusted to us. If you don't have a commitment to be a kingdom builder, we cannot, we, you cannot see the people God has placed in our, your path. We will obey, obey them and we will just, just pass by them. I get to visit uh, many different Korean churches. We have about 1,000 Korean churches in America, Canada, and few in South America that our council is overseeing. And uh, uh, oftentimes when I visit a small city uh, with a few Korean people, I emphasize that all the churches they need to witness and they need to share gospel. And in small city pastor oftentimes says, uh, in this town or in this city, we have only few Korean families. And uh, I don't, it's hard to find non-church going Korean families here to share the gospel. In other words, I don't know who to share. When did Jesus tell us to, us to share gospel only to your own ethnic group? When did Jesus tell us to invite only your ethnic people to your church? Jesus told us to go to the all nations, which means all people groups. In other words, all ethnic people. Did you know that there are about 14% of foreign-born populations in USA and 17% in Texas? According to 2021 data, 49% of the U.S. population under 21 are non-white ethnic people. 49%. Do you know that over, uh, over 200 UUPG, which means unengaged, unreached people group, have moved to America, living nearby you? And we, where they are, where they are, we had indifference. We can't see it. We need to be kingdom builders, embracing our neighbors. With love. Why is so many churches not interested in reaching other ethnic people? I think because more church, uh, the most of churches are just church builders, not the kingdom builders. Address of the place where your church meets is no accident. The place where you live is not an accident. God has placed you there. God has placed your church there. People who live near you live there because the Lord has brought them here. God is already work in the life of everyone in the community. The very presence of our neighbors is invitation to join him and his work to share Good news with them. God has sent you there and entrust you to serve the people who live there with his love and bring them goodness. So embrace your neighbor with love. A few years ago, I was uh, visiting uh, some of missionaries in Brazil and uh, 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 during the trip, I had a privilege of uh, visiting one of the largest uh, 
Brazilian uh, Baptist church in a city called San, San Jose, about hour drive from San Paulo. Uh, pastor is uh, uh, Carito Peso is the pastor, and name of church is the City Church. When the uh, pastor Caris, uh, pastor Peso arrived as a pastor of this church, they were running about six hundred. But church has so many problems; everybody fighting each other, and. Uh, but after his arrival, church began to grow in rapid pace. And now they're running 20,000 members. So we, some of us, with other, uh, me and other pastors, was visiting, and we had a privilege of meeting the senior pastor. So... As uh, most of you probably ask question too, we ask question, what is the secret to the growth? What have you done that you have turned around and the church is growing? We were kind of expecting the usual answer, prayer. We are the church of prayer. We are, or small groups, or some of other things. But we heard completely different answer. He said like this, when I came to this church, I made a biggest decision with the church leaders. We decided from now on, we would not only minister to our 600 members, but to the people in this city. And that's when they changed their name to City Church. Every department of the church or every ministry team of the church intentionally planted their ministry to include entire city and always evaluating the fruits of soul winning. As we begin to love, he says, and minister to the people of the city as if they were our members, and as we focused on soul winning, church began to grow at rapid pace. When we focus our, focus on God's kingdom and minister to people around us with love, God will use your church to expand the kingdom of God in the city and also take care of your church and your life too. So be a kingdom builder by embracing, serving the people God has placed around you and your church. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for great opportunity to share your word. Thank you for great word that you have given us. Father, help us to be kingdom builders always having the same vision that you had to save all nations. Father, help us to always share the gospel to all people and help us to embrace the people that you have placed around us. Thank you. I pray for the Southwestern and the students. May you make them great kingdom builders and use them to expand the kingdom of God. May you continue to work in the seminary. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.